So let's try to understand the architecture of ANSI. Okay, architecture of uh, ANSI. Okay, let's try to understand. Simple guys, see here. In Ansible, we have one server and we have nodes. This is server, node one, or to like any number of nodes, you could have any number of nodes. These nodes could be any number, thousand. I told you, right? Uh, I have the same example. I have a thousand packets. I want to install thousand users there in some 500 machines. These 500 are these things. These 500, okay? Other, in your company, others, they may call them as servers, but you should call them as nodes because the Ansible already we have server is right. That's why in your company, if you have some, you know, machines are there, you call them as nodes. Okay, because in Ansible already we have server. Okay. So here in Ansible we have servers and remaining all machines we call nodes. Okay, we call nodes. If we are going to install Ansible only in server. Only in server, in nodes no need. No need, not required. So how they are going to communicate? They are going to communicate by using SSH. There's a default tool in every Linux machine called SSH by using which they are going to communicate. Okay. So in Ansible server, what actually we do? We create a file in which we write some code. I told you, right? We write some code. That file we call playbook. That file we call playbook in which we write some code. In which we write some code. That code we write in AML script. Why a ML? AML. Okay. So here we write the code, what I want, like 100 users should be created, that's what we want. So what you do that you run in nodes. You run, you apply that playbook in nodes. So in nodes, actual infrastructure will be created. That is how it works. Infrastructure will be created. Okay. But here there is a small catch. For example, here I have created, I have written code to create user A. When I execute, user A will be created. User A. If you run this playbook again, then it won't take any action because the user A is already there. Okay, so how it works? See here, let me give one simple example. Suppose uh, this is a, a area, one area, one VIP movement is there here. One VIP wants to visit this area. He wants to visit. Before he visits that area, his security guard is right. He will visit that place. Before VIP visits, his security guard will visit. He will recce. He will conduct recce and all. He will verify whether everything is fine or not. Whether it is safe to visit or not. He will and collect complete information. And he will give that information to this VIP. Hey VIP, this is the situation there. Uh, these many things are there, these many people are there, so that these are situation and all. Then VIP will decide whether to visit or not. If he feels like, yes, it's safe to visit, then he will visit. If not, he will not visit. Correct? That is what actually happens. So here also in the same manner, here also same thing. Here also same thing. There's a module called setup module. Okay, this VIP you can call as setup module. There's a module called setup. Okay. Setup module is it. Yeah. Now add it. Now am I audible? Now. Now is it fine? Yes, yes. It's currently fine, sir. Okay, okay, fine. So here. Yeah. There is a module called setup module. That's a module we call module. Okay. So that setup module is a kind of security guard. Is a kind of security setup module. When you run the playbook, 
set up module it will go to nodes and it will collect the data current data and give that data back to ansible server i'm repeating that is see the set up module is a kind of security guard actually it is not it is a module actually we call you can think is a kind of security guard so when you when you when you run when you try to run the playbook first set up module will go will go to nodes and collect the data from a from configuration files so in every node there are some configuration files under etc directory it will read that configuration files it will collect the data and give the data back to server okay server is like a ansible server is like a va so set up module will collect the data will give the data to va then we have will decide whether to run the playbook or not see set up module collected and give, given the data back to server now server came know that hey already user is there because from that collected data already came know that user is there then vap the server will think that are why to run the playbook already user is there so no need now here i have written some more some extra code uh, to install a package x then when you try to run the playbook set up module will go will collect the data will give that data back to server server will verify okay user a is already there fine user x is, package x is not installed right then it will run the playbook and only package x will be installed only x will be installed so whatever things are not there only those will be executed okay this concept we call id impotence id em po tnc id impotence it means not repeating the same task again and again if user is already there it won't overwrite if a package is already there it won't overwrite okay this id impotence we can achieve by using you know setup module okay because it is going and collecting data and giving that data back to ansible server then server will decide what to do or not to do okay see uh, if you want to do any type of work you need particular tool right suppose you want to uh, you know uh you want to make a hole to a wall you want to make a hole you need drill machine correct this is one tool you want to uh, cut something you need a cutter right you want to hold something tightly you need plier cutting plier whatever if you want to uh, no remove one screw you need screw driver correct so to do every activity you need respective tool correct or not then only you can do it correct or not if you want to do anything if you want to do anything you need respective tool here also same thing if you want to create a file you need one module here here we call tools but in ansible we call them as modules modules if you want to create a file we use one module respect to module file creation module we use if you want to create a directory we use respect to module if you want to install a package we use that separate module if you want to uninstall a package we use separate module like to do any kind of task we use respect to module so setup is one of the modules setup is one of the modules okay it is acting like a security guard i know okay to do each and every activity we use respect to modules okay those we are going to mention in this file that file we call playbook understood that is how it is going to work okay yeah so this is push mechanism guys so ansible server is going to push code to nodes push why i am stressing this word because there are some tools like chef chef is that is a pull mechanism that's a different entirely okay so it is a push mechanism Okay, so package you are going to install only in server, not in nodes. Okay, so here in this Ansible, we are going to talk about Linux admin topics like SSH connection, sudo privileges, passwordless connection, all those things. We are going to admin topics. We are going to Linux admin. We are going to discuss here because here we are going to use all those. Things. Got it? This is the uh, architecture of Ansible and just a basic overview. But when we you know when you start practical things there i will explain so many things okay this is a basic overview got it yeah 
So other tools in the market can be really complicated. Other tools means you, you can take Chef, Puppet and all, overhead of infrastructure. See, in other tools, you know, a lot of infrastructure setup, you know, setting up, connection, configuration, it's a big thing. Complicated setup, yes. Connecting all those things and all also a big task. Let's, let me give a simple example. In Chef, we used to have workstation, we used to have server, we used to have nodes. Three stays in Chef, but in Ansible only server and nodes. No need workstation. In Chef, we used to write code in workstation. We used to upload to server. From there, we are going to deploy nodes. But here only two, right? Two stays. That's it. So huge overhead of infrastructure in Chef. Complicated setup. You need to connect all. That's it. Other tools are really complicated because, yeah, we set up. Pull mechanism. See, in Chef, pull mechanism. Pull is not so user friendly, not so comfortable mechanism. But here it's a push very easy. A lot of learning required. You need to know about workstation, you need to know about server, you need to have know nodes. But here only server and nodes. Comparatively easy, right? Correct or not? That's it. Pros of Ansible. It's agentless. Why agentless? Here it is using default agent called SSH. These are default agent in Linux, every Linux machine. But in Chef, to get that connection and all, we used to install separate agent manually. So here, that means no need external agent. That's agent. Relays on SSH. That's what it relays on SSH, the default agent. Backend, it uses Python. It's not a pro kind of you can think, but backend, it uses Python. It doesn't mean that you should learn Python. No. See, backend, it uses Python, but you need not to learn Python for this. Okay. It's a push mechanism, very easy mechanism. Okay. So these are these actual server. These are no either you can call node <coughs> or you can call it host. You can use any of those, either node or host. Host one, host two, like a number of hosts, or you can call node one, node two. So by using S. I'll talk about this one in inventory, playbook, and all. In upcoming classes, I'll explain in a detailed manner. Okay, so these are just introduction of uh, you know Ansible introduction part. Uh, what we do uh, in uh, I mean still time is there, but it's a topic no topic wise. Uh, in next class, we are going to jump into practicals. Okay, we'll install Ansible. Okay, I'll tell you what actually we do in next class. In next class, we are going to launch. Total three EC2 instances. One will make it as a server, and where we'll install Ansible. And we'll connect these two. Okay, the setup and all everything we do. Okay, establishing uh, that you know infrastructure. Then we'll write some playbooks and all, we'll learn everything. That's what we are going to do from our next lesson onwards. Okay. So this is the theory of Ansible, guys. Uh, it's not over it. Theory is not over it. While discussing practical, while uh, doing practical things, so, so many things are there that we'll discuss there. Okay. Yeah. So here, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Till here. <coughs>